Hi, I'm Park Howell, and welcome to The Business of Story, where purpose-driven people like you learn how to craft and tell compelling stories to grow your revenue and amplify your impact. If you would like to clarify your story in under 30 minutes, visit me at businessofstory.com because you got to own your story to grow your brand. I thought it was just a stupid picture of a pig in the ocean. But after hearing that story, I had to have it. Now I wasn't just buying a picture. I was buying a story. Story literally made the picture worth more money to me. That's what businesses are about. People buy brands. People buy stories much more than anything else. I work with a lot of big enterprise companies, but let's just say I always tell folks, drop the PowerPoint, close your laptops, start with your story. If you want people to get engaged and you want people to act, you have to tell them an emotionally powerful story. That's with great characters, it's with uncertain outcomes, and it's with high stakes and drama. All business strategy is a story. Hello and welcome to this special edition of the Business of Story podcast. I am so glad you're here and I'm going to make it well worth your while. Not only with the insights and the resources I'm going to offer on today's show, but with a special offer at the end. So hear me out. And believe it or not, this is our 101st show. And it's the first episode where you get just me. I wanted to take this time to thank you for listening to The Business of Story, for all of your wonderful notes about the impact the show and our guests have had on you, and how you've grown as storytellers to literally nudge the world in any direction you choose. You rock. Now, I want to up the ante a bit. I want to go all in by refining, clarifying, and focusing my own Business of Story story to help you do the same in your business. From here on out, from episodes 102 and beyond, nothing in the business of story will make sense except in the light of connection, helping purpose-driven leaders like you clarify your story to grow revenue and amplify your impact in the world by connecting you with your audiences and moving them to action through the power of true business stories well told. That's what I'm here to do for you. This is my singular focus now for the business of story, and it has taken me 100 episodes to finally arrive at this focus, plus a great deal of help from my good friend, Greg Head. More on that and him in a bit. Now, what you'll get out of this show is how to find and articulate the unique purpose that drives you and your organization, how to clarify that story with lots of examples and resources for you, and how to use the impact you'll make as the launching point for the epic growth for your organization. You see, after 100 amazing guests, story artists from around the world who have come to be on our show, helping you craft and tell compelling stories that sell, this theme of igniting the growth of purpose-driven leaders through the power of story has expressed itself. It's what resonates most clearly and authentically with me. Now, I realize that some of my favorite episodes with people whose personal stories were much larger than their brand story, and in fact, influenced the direction of their organization. Like Vincent Stanley, for instance, he's the director of philosophy for outdoor retailer Patagonia. Vincent was one of my first guests back in July of 2015, and he talked about how Patagonia essentially invented story marketing in their very first product catalogs when they opened in 1973. Their mission is to turn customers into activists to help protect our wilderness. A pretty important purpose, I'd say, and especially one for an outdoor company. Now, another episode I refer to often is the one I did with Hollywood story consultant Jen Grisanti. She wrote an amazing book called Change Your Story, Change Your Life. She not only teaches and coaches movie and TV screenwriters how to perfect their craft, but also how to live into a bigger story. This episode explores the important question, what is your personal dilemma connected to your professional pursuit? You see, what I've learned is that conflict is the marrow for all stories, and conflict is what drives our brands. There's got to be conflict in the marketplace. There's got to be conflict inflicted on our customers so that we are there as the brand to help them get what they want and to help them overcome. Essentially, 
no conflict, no story. Jen really underscored that to me in this particular episode. Very well worth uh, listening to. And I just ask you, what is the conflict that makes your brand uniquely urgent, uniquely relevant to your audiences? Now, speaking of conflict, do you know that conflict of having massive amounts of junk crammed in and around your home? Oh, man, we've been going through that. Michelle and I are going through a move right now. We're downsizing a bit, and we are wading through 30 years of stuff. And there's a lot of conflict that comes with what do you keep and what goes. Well, we had another guest on Business of Story that addresses that conflict in his customer's life. Is Brian Scudamore, the founder of 1-800-GOT-JUNK. Now, Brian joined us to talk about how he grew 1-800-GOT-JUNK into a quarter of a billion dollar brand. And he did it not by focusing on just taking care of junk, but what he talked about, his unique purpose, the purpose that drove the business is that 1-800-GOT-JUNK is actually a leadership business that happens to haul junk. Now, that's a focused, purpose-driven business, and the proof is in the pudding with how well he's built it. With a lot of these guests, I've learned that if you truly want to live into a bigger story for your personal and professional brand, then you must find a purpose greater than yourself to serve. The purpose of the business of story has always been to help people live into their most powerful story and prosper from them. But that line is too vague for some people. So it ultimately comes down to helping leaders of purpose-driven organizations clarify their story to grow their revenue and amplify their impact. I know I'm repeating myself from the top of the show, but I wanted to be crystal clear with you that this is what it's all about. And I want to underscore that it is critically important for you, too, to be crystal clear about your personal and professional brand story. Because if you're not, you will drown in the sea of noise that we all compete in. And I found that when you get your brand story straight, everything else becomes easy. Everything else comes into alignment. Everything else just gets way simpler. You say no to more things and yes to fewer. But the most important things come your way. So if you're new to Business of Story, you might be wondering how in the heck I got here. Well, two years ago, I was a total story geek. Okay, I still am. But my goal for the first 100 episodes was to help you understand and appreciate the power of storytelling in your business and in your life so that you would become more intentional about it, connect with people at a deeper level, and advance your visions and missions further, faster. I had uh, the help of my good friend Jay Barrett, Convince and Convert, who helped me produce and distribute my first year and a half worth of shows with great people like Jess Ostroff of Don't Panic Management. This team really helped put Business of Story on the map. The past 20 or so shows, we have been producing them. We took them over. I found a remarkable producer, podcast producer, by the name of Brian Adoff of Riveting FM in Philadelphia. He's brought a musician's ear to the quality of the production and some terrific marketing insight as well. He's just been an invaluable addition to our team. And of course, Lisa Leffler of Genuine Media has just really been remarkable. She's been with me now for almost a year and has helped me with the distribution, the advertising of the show, as well as with my speaking engagements. You know, both of them have make up this really powerful triumvirate, if you will, of me and them bringing you the business of story. They're fa fabulous people. Highly recommend them if you are in need of a virtual team. My focus has been on sharing how stories work, you know, the architecture of epic stories and how to use them in your business. If you're an avid listener, then you probably know my story by now. So here are the cliff notes. I've been in advertising for more than 30 years, ran my own agency for 20 years, and for the past 15 years, I have been steeped in business storytelling. My deep dive into brand storytelling began around 2004 when I noticed that our traditional advertising work that our agency was doing was not nearly as effective as it used to be. As I often say in my speaking engagements and workshops, brands used to own the influence of mass media, but now the masses are the media and they are your brand storytellers. You and your brand must become the story maker. One of my favorite examples of a brand doing this very thing is Airbnb. 
they do a heroic job of placing their customers, both their homeowners who rent their homes and the guests they rent them to, at the center of their brand story. Then they make it easy for them, their customers, to share their stories. I love their tagline as well, belong anywhere. They're selling inclusion and freedom, two pretty dynamic concepts and an especially powerful purpose given this moment, and let's hope it's just a moment, in the Trump White House where they appear to be pushing anything but inclusion and freedom. By the way, have you seen Sweden's latest story marketing campaign? The country just listed itself on Airbnb and its purpose is plain to see. Explore the freedom to roam. Now, I want to play the audio from this YouTube clip for you and just picture all the beautiful lakes, rivers, streams, forests, towns, cities, and people as the voiceover intones and invites you to their Airbnb. Sure, they're ultimately going after tourists, but they do it with such a beautiful purpose that plays to the sensibilities of reasonable and fun-loving people. Take a listen and then go to our show notes to see the video for yourself. Hi, my name is Åke, and this is my home. Roughly 100 million acres of land that is all mine. Well, I share it with 10 million other people, but I'm speaking on their behalf, so to speak. Welcome to the relaxation area. It's very spacious, to say the least. And check this out. 100,000 tempered infinity pools. This is my terrace. Custom design with panoramic floor-to-ceiling views in every direction. And this is my bathroom. Swedish minimalistic style, completely outfitted with all necessities. Last but not least, here is where the magic happens. And here. And here. And sometimes here. You see, in Sweden, we have this thing called freedom to roam. It's a right protected by the law that allows me to sleep and eat and walk pretty much wherever I want. Now you can too, because we listed the entire country on Airbnb. Welcome to my home. Welcome to Sweden. Okay, so I digressed a bit. I just get so excited when I come across smart story marketing. By the way, that's hard to say three times fast. Smart story marketing, smart story marketing. Well, you see where I'm going. Anyways, I was telling you my story about how I realized that the impact you can have when you become an intentional storyteller, telling stories on purpose. I learned that storytelling held the key to reconnecting with audiences. So I started studying everything I could find on the subject. It really started in 2006. Our middle son, Parker, went to film school at Chapman University in Orange, California. I asked him to send me his textbooks when he was finished with them. After all, we were paying for them. So I could learn what Hollywood knew about captivating audiences through story. Plus, I suppose I wanted to vet his college education just to see how Chapman actually prepares eager filmmakers to be competitive in the most competitive storytelling market in the world, Hollywood. I realize now that this was my creative right brain diving into storytelling, because at the same time, our youngest son, Caden, had to undergo brain surgery to reduce swelling in his ventricles. It was a pretty scary time, as you might imagine. During the run-up to his surgery, Cade went through a battery of tests, and Michelle and I read everything we could absorb about the brain and how it functions under the significant stress of encephalitis. One of the books I found, which has become my favorite on storytelling, is The Storytelling Animal, How Stories Make Us Human by Jonathan Gottschall. In it, he explores the intersection of story structure with brain structure and how our minds, in his words, yield helplessly to the suction of story. Jonathan became a long-distance friend of mine, has been kind enough to lecture twice to my students at Arizona State University, and he was also one of my very first guests on the Business of Story podcast. Now, in hindsight, I realized that I, too, was living at the intersection of right-brain Hollywood storytelling and left-brain story mechanics as I was learning from the journeys both of our sons were on. This is when I was introduced to Joseph Campbell and his universal structure called The Hero's Journey and why it connects so powerfully with the deep reaches of our mind the subconscious, where our intuitive decisions are made that shape our beliefs and our behaviors. 
During this time between roughly 2006 and 2010, I found myself at the crossroads of the neuroscience of storytelling, how we're pre-wired from birth to make meaning through stories with the architecture of stories, how to use them to connect with people on a very primal level and move them to action. Since then, our two boys are doing great. Cade is a healthy 23-year-old composer and producer of EDM, or electronic dance music, and he's a DJ. And Parker is pursuing his dream of becoming a filmmaker in downtown Hollywood. He pays the bills as a sought-after motion designer, and you can see his work in action on the upcoming CBS game show, Candy Crush. Ever hear that game? Now that I was armed with the why and how of business storytelling, I created the story cycle system that was inspired by Campbell's hero's journey. But instead of his 17 steps, I've mapped it to 10 steps that any business can use for high-level brand story strategy development, right down to the tactical creative elements, including things like TV spots, web user experience design, blog posts, print ads, sales presentations, you name it. I was so excited to share with the world what I had learned and the successes we were having with our clients that I began pursuing all of the brightest minds in storytelling to share their brilliance with you. To be totally honest, I was being self-serving too because I get to learn right along you with every single episode. That alone makes all the cost and the effort of producing this podcast well worth it. One of my early successes was having legendary screenwriting coach Robert McKee on the show. We had such a wonderful conversation, he even returned for an encore performance. By the way, you'll find links to each of the episodes that I mentioned in this show within our show notes, so it's easy for you to go and track them down. Anyway, I first met McKee when I attended his four-day story seminar in the LAX Sheridan in 2010. Parker joined me those four days in that dark, clammy conference room. He was there to advance his filmmaking screenwriting chops, along with about 200 of his competitors. And I was there to learn what a marketer like me could find out about Hollywood storytelling so that we could make our creative more impactful. Well, after the seminar, you won't believe it. McKee actually invited me to his Connecticut home to interview him for my podcast. Now, this was long before the business of story. This was my very first flailing attempt at podcasting. I'd never done one before. And I showed up in his living room with my little Zoom recorder and my wits. I placed the recorder between he and I on the sofa and away we went for three frigging hours. I couldn't believe it. He was so kind and so generous with his knowledge on screenwriting and how we can use it in our businesses that I, it just blew me away. And I was making it up and learning as I went. Well, this remarkable experience underscores a fundamental premise that Joseph Campbell talks about when you follow your bliss. And by bliss, he means the authentic story you have the courage to live into. Campbell said, when you follow your bliss, doors will open where there were only walls before. Now, Robert McKee and his lovely wife, Mia, opened their home and their world to me. And for that, I will be forever grateful. You can still listen to that session edited into 10 10-minute 10 segments on SoundCloud. And I must not have embarrassed myself too much because Robert has been back on my show not once, but twice with his raucous interviews. He's such a pleasure to be around. Well, if you don't know the man and his work, all you have to do is listen to this scene in Spike Jones's famous movie, Adaptation, starring Nicolas Cage as struggling screenwriter Charlie Kaufman. Actor Brian Cox portrays McKee as he responds to Kaufman's question during presumably his famous story seminar. Warning, though, there's an F-bomb or two in here, so that's kind of consistent with McKee's approach to teaching screenwriting. And after actually sitting through his four-day story event, I think this portrayal by Cox is pretty dead on. Let's take a listen. Yes. Sir, what if a writer is attempting to create a story where nothing much happens, where people don't change, they don't have any epiphanies, they struggle and are frustrated and nothing is resolved. More reflection of the real world. The real world? Yes, sir. The real fucking world. First of all, you write a screenplay without conflict or crisis, you'll bore your audience to tears. Secondly, nothing happens in the world? 
Are you out of your fucking mind? People are murdered every day. There's genocide, war, corruption. Every fucking day, somewhere in the world, somebody sacrifices his life to save somebody else. Every fucking day, someone somewhere takes a conscious decision to destroy someone else. People find love. People lose it. For Christ's sake, a child watches a mother beaten to death on the steps of a church. Someone goes hungry. Somebody else betrays his best friend for a woman. If you can't find that stuff in life, then you, my friend, don't know crap about life. And why the fuck are you wasting my two precious hours with your movie? I don't have any use for it. I don't have any bloody use for it. Okay, thanks. Any questions? Okay, deep breath here. Another one of my favorites was a guy who epitomizes the intersection of science and story, and that is Dr. Randy Olson. He's a Harvard PhD biologist who also graduated from the USC Film School. Randy has produced three documentaries on the environment and climate change and has written three books to help scientists become better communicators through the power of storytelling. His latest book, Houston, We Have a Narrative, Why Science Needs Story, is my favorite scientific book on storytelling. The book focuses on the and, but, and therefore construct to create stories. It's so simple and yet so powerful. I call it the DNA of story. And I'm honored to call Randy a friend. He's become a great friend as we share our trials and tribulations in uh, teaching storytelling around the world. And Randy's also been on my show twice. The first time he talked about the ABT when his book came out. And his most recent appearance was the day after the election. He dissected Trump's narrative intuition and why he won the election, because he outstoried the Democrats. It's just that simple. Quote, America used to be great. America is no longer great. I'll make America great again. Three acts, setup, problem, resolution, and what may be the most successful use of the ABT of all time. You know, Olson's Trump episode is like one of my most listened to from around the world. It was my singular most popular. I even had some friends reach out to me in disgust, suggesting that I was capitalizing on Trump's victory for my own business of story gain by highlighting he and his narrative intuition. Well, my response to them and to you, if you feel the same way, is that you must understand the magic to combat the spell. Listen to all of Trump's ramblings through the lens of the basal ABT structure, and you'll get a whole new appreciation for how he hoodwinks his base, goes against reason, and demolishes the Democrats with his storytelling. The Dems simply don't know how to connect with America through a powerful story. And Olson, I think, does a really good job of highlighting that in this particular episode. Olson's purpose is to advance science by helping big thinkers connect with the rest of us. His vehicle happens to be the very simple, very powerful ABT, the DNA of story. But what a purpose. Another one of my favorite authors is Lisa Cron, who wrote Wired for Story, the writer's guide to using brain science to hook readers from the very first sentence. Lisa came on the show to explore the art and science of storytelling to help you with your brand narrative. Now, while Lisa's book is about guiding fiction writers in writing the next epic novel, and by the way, you can pull a lot, extract a lot from her tips and techniques that you can use in your own brand storytelling, there was another guy that came in that I really enjoyed on the show, and his name is Lee Gutkin, the founder of Creative Nonfiction and author of several books, including You Can't Make This Stuff Up, The Complete Guide to Writing Creative Nonfiction from Memoir to Literary Journalism. He is the foremost authority on the art of sharing true stories well told. Now, these two approaches are important to brand storytelling because you want to tell true stories about how your product or service have empowered and leveled up your customers while using brain science to understand and appreciate how to craft and tell your stories. So as you can see, our son Cade's bout with encephalitis and our son Parker's exploration of Hollywood storytelling has had a profound effect on my own communications career. And what I've learned, I've wanted to share with you because storytelling and business just plain works from our bones to our brands. 
Now, we've used the 10-step story cycle system to help Clinica Adelante reframe its brand story from a 30-year-old community health care center to a national leader in sustainable health care. And they have grown by 300% in the last five years. Goodwill of Central Arizona has used our story cycle system to grow from 17 stores doing $24 million in annual sales in 2003 to nearly 100 stores doing north of $140 million in sales today, with the proceeds going to workforce development programs that put a record number of Arizonans back to work. Their purpose? Good stuff, good work, goodwill. Coca-Cola used our storytelling to launch an eco-driving program with its 60,000 fleet drivers and their staff in 2010. They doubled their expected gains in fuel efficiency and maintenance savings in just the first three months of the initiative, all because they approached it and they embraced it through the power of story. So what do these three clients have in common? They all pursued a purpose greater than just selling products and services and making money. And they used intentional storytelling, telling stories on purpose to achieve epic growth. That is the power of a purpose-driven organization over its traditional status quo competitor who focuses on the bottom line, short-term gains, and invested returns over empowering the people and the community it serves. That's why now, as we move into our third year of producing the Business of Story podcast, our sole focus is to help leaders of purpose-driven organizations like yours clarify your story to grow revenue and amplify your impact. What we make is the proven story cycle system with tools and techniques to help you become an intentional storyteller. But what we make happen is helping you become a more powerful communicator, connect with audiences like you never have before, motivate and inspire people to action, and advance your mission, initiative, or cause further, faster than you ever imagined. What we make happen is what drives our purpose, to help people live into their most powerful story and prosper. Period. End of report. So, A learning moment here. Are you telling brand stories about what you make or about what you make happen in the lives of your customers? Stories about the human impact you are having, how you are leveling them up. Stories about how you deliver on your ultimate brand purpose. You see, when you tell stories about what you make, you are immediately commoditizing yourself and your offering. You start to drown in the sea of sameness. But when you tell stories about what you make happen, then you will rise above the noise and be heard. Red Bull doesn't sell you a highly addictive concoction of caffeine, taurine, vitamin Bs, and sugar. Their story is about giving you wings. Actually, the higher brand purpose was defined by its founder, Dietrich Medeschitz, when, I love that last name, Medeschitz. I'm not even sure I'm saying that right, but I love it. But he defined it when he first started this company, and it is Red Bull gives wings to people and ideas. A much higher purpose than just giving you wings. Red Bull gives you wings to people and ideas. Now, isn't that a bit more compelling than selling just an energy drink? Well, it must be, because Red Bull not only invented the category, they still own nearly half of the worldwide market for energy drinks. Let's face it. Without a good story that connects on a primal, visceral level with your audiences, making them truly feel something, then you're just more noise in the cacophony of communication we all swim in. And drown in, I might add. Without a focused story that clarifies the uniqueness, relevance, and urgency of your brand offering, you'll be marooned in this sea of sameness that we all encounter in this day and age of abundance. Your customers just like my customers, simply have too many choices to choose from. What's going to make you rise to the top of your food chain? I bet you it's story. Without a defined point to your story, a supreme focus on what you do better than anyone else buttressed by a compelling purpose, you will languish in a land of commoditization. In fact, declaring your number one position in the marketplace, what you do better than anyone else in terms of features and benefits, is your first step out of the primordial muck of commoditization. And your defined purpose is your lifeline. So 
I'm taking my own advice. Uh, as I mentioned, my good friend Greg Head, who was the head of marketing for Infusionsoft and helped them become a hundred million dollar a year company in just 10 years because he helped them find their extreme focus on sales and marketing software for small businesses. Well, Greg came in and he helped me define my brand focus of working with purpose-driven leaders. It's important too, because you see, like you, I'm competing in an increasingly crowded industry of business storytelling. Some of my competitors that I admire most, some are friends, some are acquaintances, some are complete strangers, include the likes of Donald Miller and his story brand process. I've done his program myself for my business's story brand. Story Brand's focus is to help small businesses grow their sales by clarifying their story on their websites. My interesting connection with Don, even though I've never actually met him, is that his best-selling book, A Million Miles in a Thousand Years, and its overall theme of what makes a great story also makes a great life, had a profound impact on me as I was creating the story cycle system back in the day. In fact, I went to Don's very first seminar in Portland in 2010, long before he had created his story brand process. So that I went there to kind of guide my thinking on how to help people live into their most powerful stories through the work I do in advertising, marketing, and corporate communications. Again, he was a little bit like my McKee, McKee coming at it from a screenwriting standpoint. Um, Don Miller definitely coming at it from a very popular writer, author, and a guy who was also in the throes of creating a movie, Blue Like Jazz. So he has had a big impact on me. Another terrific professional in the storytelling game and a guy I count as a friend is Michael Margolis of Get Storied. When I think of Michael and the international work he does, I think of storytelling around innovation. He worked with large global brands, including the likes of Google, Deloitte, and NASA, to help them further innovation within their organizations. Michael is definitely the innovation story guy, at least in my book. If you're looking for business storytelling in the tech world with a twist, then I'd definitely send you to Kathy Clote's guest. If you've ever seen HBO Silicon Valley, you know, Mike Judge's hysterical TV series about, well, the shenanigans that go on in Silicon Valley, then you'll get a sense of Kathy. She is a technology veteran, stand-up comic, and marketer extraordinaire who uses storytelling to help her clients curb what she calls, one of my favorite terms ever, jargon monoxide. You know what I'm talking about? You know, it's that curse of the expert malady that puts audiences to sleep, or worse, with their inane use of jargon. She coined one of my favorite terms in business storytelling, jargon monoxide, and I use it everywhere. But that's kind of indicative of her brand and her brand personality and what she is all about. Now, these are just three of the many fellow storytellers, each with a focused brand position. Don Miller's story brand for small businesses. Michael Margolis gets storied for large organization innovation. And Kathy Clote's guests for the tech world. By the way, you can hear both Michael and Kathy on my Businesses Story show. Again, see the show notes for links. And Don, consider this an open invitation for you to come on my show. Like Michael and Kathy, I admire your work and what you stand for. Hey, I even invested in your Blue Like Jazz movie. That was a brilliant crowdsource move, by the way, to raise your final quarter mill to get the movie finished. Michelle and I love the movie, and it was great fun seeing our names among the thousands of executive producers. Well done. And me? Well, my purpose is to help leaders of purpose-driven organizations like you clarify your story, to drive revenue, and amplify your success. And I deliver on my purpose in three specific ways. Number one, I help you clarify your brand story through our proven story cycle system. In fact, if you tuned into my show two weeks ago, you heard me take Jonathan Barney through the story cycle system to clarify his brand story around his restaurant service training platform and focus his purpose of, get this, helping people live a tastier life. I love it. In addition to helping you clarify your brand story, I also offer the Storytelling for Leaders and the Storytelling for Sales six-month deliberate practice training programs. You see, it's not just enough to clarify the story in your eyes or getting your leadership on board. It's now time to get all of your people on board. So you want to build a storytelling culture, and that's exactly what these programs are for. After all, when you think about it, stories 
shape the behaviors that create the culture that drives epic performance. And within that epic performance are the stories that you want to tell, the true stories well told to do what? To shape the behaviors? to create the culture that drives epic performance. And it's just this virtuous cycle that goes on and on and on. That's the beautiful thing about the power of story. Now, the storytelling for leaders and storytelling for sales deliberate practice programs come from another amazing story outfit, this time from Melbourne, Australia. Sean Callahan and Mark Schenk created these programs 13 years ago and have worked with brands around the world to build storytelling cultures. This offering is the ideal extension to the business of story, and I've become a certified partner delivering these proven programs. So why do purpose-driven organizations need to practice business storytelling now more than ever to amplify your impact? Well, because business is more complex than ever. How do you describe your place in the world to your staff, employees, customers, shareholders, and other stakeholders when so much external chaos impacts what you do every day? Chaos like growing competition in this time of abundance, a widening economic divide between the haves and have-nots, the significant environmental and social impacts of climate change, social injustice and unrest, in a White House and its cronies that appear hell-bent on alienating America from the rest of the world. In fact, I spent 12 days in the Netherlands just a couple weeks ago working with our ASU students. And do you know what the prevalent sentiment is toward our president? I heard this from business leaders, bureaucrats, and bartenders. They all asked it in their own way. Here's the question. How did you Americans let this happen, and what are you going to do about it? I kind of had to crack up at it. I mean, how'd you let this happen? What are you going to do about it? It's like cleaning up after a bad party. You let this thing happen. Now you got to go and and clean it up. Well, that's the stories that they're telling themselves. And I can tell you that these stories are impacting you and they're impacting your employees. So what do you want to do? You want to build a storytelling culture so that you are sharing and connecting with these people on your terms so that you can, you know, absolutely grow your sales to amplify your impact. And take control of the things you actually have control over. And that is to make sure your people are aligned, focused, and helping you achieve what you want in your brand by going out of your way to help them get what they want out of working with you. Now, I'm afraid PowerPoints and infographics, Snapchats and tweets aren't going to do it for you anymore. By the way, I reminded our students in Amsterdam that PowerPoints don't kill audiences. Presenters using bullets in PowerPoints do. Find your story. Don't believe me? Just listen to Janine Kernoff of the Presentation Company on Business of Story to learn how to bring storytelling to all of your communications so you can cut through the clutter and connect. Or tune in to Nick Gray of Museum Hack on how to bring adventure to your brand through storytelling. And on that note, take in my conversation with ultimate conspirator to business success, Robert Rose, on why you must turn your adjectives and adverbs into adventures in your story marketing. Now, another reason why story is more important now than ever is that our uberly connected world has created a massive malady. Attention deficit disorder is now a communicable disease. And guess what? We're all the viruses. Our connected world has ironically made us all less connected in human terms. I had a fascinating guest on about a month ago. His name is Jordan Bauer, a transformational storytelling consultant and corporate intimacy expert. Ah, see his unique positioning, his fine point, his focused purpose, transformational storytelling consultant and corporate intimacy expert. By the way, he hails out of Vancouver, Canada. These Canadians, they they just crack me up. Anyways, on my show, Jordan told me about his girlfriend breaking up with him in the summer of 2010. Boy, that's a popular date in this show, 2010. Apparently, everything pivoted for me in 2010. It just seems to keep coming up. Anyway, devastated, he did what we would all do in this circumstance. He walked from Seattle to Mexico along the Pacific coast, right? You'd do that, wouldn't you? During his four-month odyssey to find himself, Jordan came across thousands of people. He shared coffee, meals, campfires, and beers with folks from all walks of life, from hobos and hillbillies to surfer dudes to housewives, tech titans, big business folks, and I'm sure there was even a social media guru or two in there as well. 
They seem to be everywhere. Well, I asked him what was the common theme that he found among all these very disparate people. What do you think he said? Well, Jordan told me that to a person, the common sentiment was alienation and loneliness. Alienation and loneliness. He learned on his trek that these dopamine pumps we call iPhones and Androids that promise to connect us with the world actually create greater isolation. Even FOMO, that fear of missing out. What we're missing in our overcommunicated and overconnected world is authentic person-to-person -person interaction. If Gottschall said our minds yield helplessly to the section of story, then I believe our hearts crave helplessly for the bonding with real people. Jordan's point of people feeling alienated and lonely is not the first time I've heard this theme, but it struck me hard on this show for some reason. I even created a manifesto of sorts just to help me get my head around this phenomenon. I call it the virtual connection myth. And here's my short manifesto. Our digital dopamine pumps artificially reward us for superficial online interactions, masking an epidemic of alienation and loneliness. People suffer as their storytelling skills atrophy in the absence of authentic human connection in the real world. Oh my God, am I suffering from jargon monoxide? Storytelling jargon monoxide. I hope not. The point I wanted to make is don't get bamboozled that that little dopamine pump is connecting you with any anyone, really. And that is the powerful tool for your brand story. Now, you've got to use it, and there are ways to use it. But what it ultimately comes down to is the most powerful story you will ever tell is in person. If you can't be in front of the water cooler with your audience, then the second most powerful story you can tell is first person online. Tell me a story with a timestamp. When did it happen? A location stamp. Where did it happen? Real people as characters. Give me action and adventure. Surprise me. And then deliver your business point. And believe it or not, you can do this in 60 seconds or less. For instance, on Thursday of June 26, just a couple weeks ago, I was giving a storytelling workshop for a bunch of Dutch professionals who specialize in sustainability and the circular economy and Harlem Amir. Holland. A young man named Max is an intern for one of these organizations and is about to graduate with his business degree in sustainability. I asked the gathering who their toughest audience was so we could work on stories to connect with them on their terms. Max told me it was his granddad. You see, his grandpa didn't understand sustainability, didn't believe in man-made global warming, and told Max he was wasting his time with his foolish degree. I could tell he was crestfallen by not having his grandfather's approval. So I instructed Max to use the story cycle to craft a story from his grandpa's point of view and then challenged him to share his story over the weekend. I ran into Max four days later when our ASU cohort returned to Harlem Mermir for another session. I can say that word, Harlem Mermir. You know what it means? It means Harlem by the lake, by the way. And that's where Harlem from New York came from. I didn't realize that until I started visiting. Anywho, I digress once again, but I ran into Max and he had this just gigantic smile on his face. I just had to say, what's up, dude? Well, he told me about having a conversation with his grandpa about climate change and how he used a hockey stick to demonstrate to the old man how carbon in our atmosphere has remained relatively balanced for millennia and then pointed to the curve end of the stick to demonstrate the man-made carbon we have pumped into the system over a short amount of time. Essentially, he did a brilliant job of turning this data into drama using the hockey stick as a prop. I asked Max if his granddad likes hockey. Loves it, he said, with his smile growing even wider. Smart young man, that Max. Understanding his audience and having such empathy for their point of view that he found a way to use story to connect, change his beliefs, and ultimately earn his approval. Pretty cool and a really simple example of the power of story in all of our lives to communicate a business point, especially a purpose-driven business point. By the way, I learned this basic structure of story with time and location stamps, characters, action, a surprise, and point 
from my friends at Anecdote. In fact, Sean Callahan, again, joined me on Business of Story about a year and a half ago, and that's when I was first introduced to storytelling for leaders and storytelling for sales and knew that I just had to make it a part of my repertoire. If you want to listen to that show, again, go to the show notes. There'll be a link to that particular episode so you can learn how to use this in your business as well. Okay, now we're coming to the big close of the show, and I've got a special offer for you. What I ultimately want to do is help you clarify your brand story strategy, focus your purpose to grow your revenue, and amplify your impact. So when I told Brian, our producer who you met earlier in the show, what I wanted to do, he was a little bit skeptical. He thought maybe it sounded a little bit too good to be true. So we're going to let you be the judge of that. What I'm offering to you with absolutely no strings attached is a complimentary 30-minute phone call to demonstrate how quickly you can get your brand story straight. I promise it'll be the most invaluable free advice for your business or organization that you have ever received. Just go to businessofstory.com and register for your free impact call. I'll help you clarify your story in 30 minutes or less. You have absolutely nothing to lose. And what's in it for me? Well, I get to connect with real people in real time and learn about your real needs. Our conversation while helping you clarify your story to grow your revenue and amplify your impact will also help me better understand exactly what the market needs. This is a total win-win consulting call. You'll be doing me a huge favor by helping me dial in my own purpose as I help you live into your most powerful story and prosper. This is a limited time offer. I can't do this forever. And I can tell you that not everyone is going to get the free impact call. If you're in business just to make money, then I'd recommend you reach out to some of the other storytelling consultants. But if you're into truly amplifying your impact and empowering your people to live into and prosper from your story, then I'm your guy. So register now at our new and improved website, businessofstory.com. And thank you for listening to this special 101st episode of the Business of Story podcast. God, you're probably hoping that I don't return solo for another 100 shows, right? Finally, I want to remind you that regardless of what you do with your business, leadership, and sales storytelling, the most potent story you will ever tell is the story you tell yourself. So make it a good one. Thanks for listening. And until next Sunday, have a wonderful life.